Welcome to Tech Notice. This over here is an absolute balls to the wall PC, consumer PC. We're not talking about Threadripper and CM platforms because they're a little bit different. When it comes to like consumer PC, this is like as good as it can get. We have a 3090, we have Ryzen 5950X, the latest 16 car monster of a processor. But the question is, in terms of like creative applications and creative workflow, how good is it? actually also in the end of the video we're going to be checking out the live playback speed of lots of different codecs and resolutions of video on premiere pro so if you're a video editor definitely stick till that part so let's jump right into it So if you're new to this channel and you don't know how these videos actually work, then this is a three-part video series. On the first part, we're actually building the PC and we did a live stream on this. If you want to actually build this and you want to know how to do it, you can check out the live stream or the link uh, in the corner of the video over there. And this is the second part. We're actually going to be talking about some of the benchmarks and how good is the PC. And then in the third video, we're going to be doing like a review of this PC, like some of the things you should maybe be looking out for when building this and some of the things you should be considering and just like kind of my overview or review of this PC and how good is it. So feel free to check them out, but let's continue with the part two. And if you don't know what exact configuration and what parts I'm using, then I'm leaving all the links in the description below for this PC so you can basically check all the links and all the latest specs and pick them up if you want to or just check the latest uh you know, pricing. So let's start with the CPU. Uh, over here, we have the Cinebench R23 benchmark. And as you can see, uh, these are screenshots of previously done uh, like benchmarks of this. Our multi-core score is almost 29,000. And our single core is 1,601, which actually is a little bit lower than uh, some of the benchmarks out there for this uh, CPU. So just so you know, the single core performance can be a little bit better on some of the CPUs. There's a little bit of a silicon for some of these chips but very very impressive scores as you can see there is not that many processors that are better than this uh, CPU over here. We have the Intel 11th gen, a little bit better over here, as you can see, just 1% or something like that, just a few percent better. And then the same for the, these are basically the same processor, just one is without integrated graphics. Now let's have a look at the Geekbench scores. These over here are 16,090 for the single core and 17,011 for the actual single core speeds. And as you can see, in terms of Geekbench, this is like as good as, as it can get in terms of Geekbench. I don't think there is 11th gen processors over here, so they will probably be topping this processor as well a little bit better. As you can see, our score is a little bit lower than what rated over here on Geekbench 5, because some of these, like I said, this processor is a little bit of a lower a single core speed, but we're talking about one, two percent. And then multi-score, as you can see over here, we are roughly around 17,000, which we are roughly over here. So let's have a look at like, what does it mean like in terms of Mac world? Okay, the interesting thing is, check this out. The 18 core iMac Pro is 13,000 and our 16 core, so two cores, four thread less, is 17,000. In fact, we're actually core to core performance is actually better than the 16 core Mac Pro, and we're getting close to the 24 cores, um, you know, Mac Pro performance in terms of the multi core rendering, which is ridiculous. And just to irritate the uh, Mac users, then that 24 core processor that we just compared our processor with. If you want to get this on Mac Pro, then that processor on its own costs more than this whole system together. Just for a little comparison for the price. For Blender, I did two benchmarks. And this one over here is when the precision boost overdrive is off. And as you can see, these are the results over here. So if you want to compare them to your PCs or you know your system over here, you can do the same benchmarks and then see how much better this is. But it's, it's pretty impressive. One minute, 38 seconds for the BMW. Let's compare it to when the precision boost overdrive is on. As you can see, we are getting 13 seconds on the first one gaining of air on the second classroom uh, tests or benchmark we are over 
almost 30 seconds, which is quite a lot. And as you can see, if you have the precision boost overdrive on, you can gain quite a lot of boost. So Victor Render, which is one of the longer renders, as you can see, this is almost 40 seconds increase of performance. So definitely worth checking it out. If you don't know what the PBO is, then check out my other video, what I did about this very quick video, how you can do it by one click adding, you know, that one click in BIOS and you can get up to 20% performance, which I did over here, which is insane. And let's have a look at the GPU performance because this is an RTX 3090. And if you wanted to do a little bit of GPU rendering, you can do that as well. And it's very impressive speeds. But as you can see, if you use the GPU, it's so much better than the CPU. 19 seconds compared to one minute, 25 seconds, which is insane. While we're on the GPU topic, let's see like what are the Geekbench scores for the RTX 3090. So if anyone wants to do like a CUDA score, we have 251,666. We have uh, the OpenCL score as 220,418 and the Vulcan score is 8. 173,496 scores. And before we're gonna go into the temperatures, if you're wondering how good is this for gaming, just a quick little benchmark over here is the Heaven benchmark. If you wanna check this out, here it is. Heaven benchmarks for this, uh, the extreme preset. You can try and do that and then see what is your score to see how good this is. But this is more creative, you know, focused review of benchmarking. So we're gonna get into that. Next off, we have the temperatures, like how good good are the temperatures in there because we have an absolutely you know a uh, furnace of a cpu in there some of the intel ones are worse but quite uh you know heat producing processes 16 cores 32 threads every single component here is air cooled there's no water cooling we're not using an aio over here depends if you're using the precision boost overdrive or not the temperatures vary obviously if you have the precision boost off and you're just using from the stock putting them on then just have a look at the temperatures the maximum temperatures for blender render that is like just the peak of the you know temperatures we're reaching is 77 c and that is absolutely fine it's absolutely amazing speed because it didn't stay there that was just sometimes when it just you know starts to render and gets the all the cores there and then it just peaks in temperature but then actually settles roughly you know in the 60s and that's what you can see if you're running like a cinebench benchmark multi-core test then it's sitting somewhere around 60 degrees which is just amazing and that's with the precision boost overdrive off now if we put it on and tell basically the computer just run as much as you can as fast as you can um, no limits over there obviously we're using so much more power as you can see 242 watts another 100 watts compared to this when it's off yeah literally 100 watts more then our peak temperatures are 89 celsius which is getting a little bit toasty and much much louder but it's definitely able to do it and sustain the temperatures over there because these over here are absolute blowers these are 3000 rpm fans which is just ridiculous so they blow a lot of cool air in and through so you don't really need to be worried about cooling in terms of cooling it's very very impressive now the sound is maybe something that gets a little bit compromised over here when using air cooling because obviously we're using so much more fans and in terms of the gpu temperatures i'm very impressed with them as well the cool thing is with this gpu you can actually monitor temperature of the gpu right on this little lcd display that's on the side of this uh, graphics card which is insane so if you're running like gpu like intensive task or something like that where the gpu is 100 utilized and then trying to like max out the gpu then you can see that the gpu just will say is maybe 70 something like that degrees i never saw it reach 80 degrees which is just amazing because there's a absolutely big chungus of a heat sink over there so what are we waiting for? Let's see the real world performance of a video editor. How good is it? And let's try some of these codecs then over here. So first of all, we have 8-bit 420 60 FPS uh, clip over here. We're playing it back full speed or full resolution, as you can see. And the timeline performance is absolutely buttery smooth. Like I have no problems over here. The playback is very, very easy. This is H.264 codec, so it's not very hard to play this back. So because it's hardware accelerated, any 8-bit footage that you might have for any mirrorless cameras, you can throw at it, you know, 4K, you'll be absolutely fine. And this is 60 frames per second as well. So now this is a 10-bit footage. 
uh, 24 frames per second H.265 codec. So let's have a look how is, does it do that. The same, very, very, very similar performance, very smooth playback because the, as you can see this again over here, the 420 is actually played back or decoded with the graphics card, so that's that. But the playback speed for this 10-bit footage is absolutely fine. Now, this is a little bit of a nutcracker over here in terms of the hardware of PCs because it's 10-bit 422, which doesn't have a hardware acceleration. So now this is all just the software acceleration, means all the heavy work goes on the CPU. H.264 codec from the A7S III. So let's have a look at the playback. As you can see, so much more choppier than before. And I can hear that the CPU is ramping up. You can probably hear the fans, they're going louder because we're using a lot of the CPU to do this. Now it is totally doable, but it is much choppier experience compared to the 10-bit 420. And then as we can see over here, you can see the CPU is absolutely maxed out and our GPU is doing nothing because it can't be accelerated from the hardware. Memory's usage is the same. In terms of like timeline performance, it's quite snappy. As good as 422 can really get picked. Now this is 422, the same um, codec, but now 60 frames per second, H.264. Let's see if that is any different. So we just have more frames, similar kind of situation, not as smooth as previously with a 420, totally just brutally forces uh, it to go through not too bad of performance but not too good either as you can see our cpu has been like much more maxed out over there when playing this back 10 bit 420 a 10 bit h265 so high efficiency codec and codec not with q codec and uh, we have 50 frames per second so look at the timeline performance very very smooth and because it's 420 it can be accelerated through graphics card even though it's h265 very very smooth playback and as you can see our graphics card is doing all the work and we're playing it back smoothly now let's move on to a little bit of a different codec this is a red raw so raw codec now not just the bait codec and raw codec and we're playing it back full resolution so giving it like as much as it can get by the way if you didn't know this little green like a uh, little knob over here is the frames dropped indicator so if we're dropping any frames this will show us the this but we're playing back full resolution 4k red draw and look at that it's the smoothest of the codec so far so 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 smooth to play back it's like the speed of my cursor like the faster i go on the timeline that's how fast it plays it back which is just ridiculous and as you can see we're using the cpu a lot to play this back not so much of a video decode from the gpu uh, it's all on the cpu but super super smooth let's move the resolution up a bit 5k let's press play and we're playing back 5k red footage oh are we dropping frames over here yes we dropped one frame oh no that must be bad let me put it in the beginning and press play again so we can see zero frames dropped so far playing back 5k red raw footage it's quite insane okay as you can see we're not dropping any frames and the timeline performance is super super smooth as well so as you can see this is going also on the gpu i think some of the debayering of that footage goes on the gpu but not too much uh, as you can see the gpu is not utilized as much as you can see the ram is used less than on some of the hit um, you know mirrorless camera footage Let's keep going. This is a B-Raw from the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. And let's have a look at the timeline performance. Super, super smooth. Again, like unbelievable codec. It's very easy to edit back, so no problem. These are two 6K clips on top of each other. And then we have three 6K top clips on top of each other. And we're playing it back, no problem. Full resolution, absolutely ridiculous. As you can see, now we peaked at and 35 gigabytes of ram somewhere over there so we used a little bit more ram and a little bit more gpu but the cpu was still like one of the main things but if you're using any of the b-raw no problem let's move to red 6k full resolution let's have a look let's press play see what happens so we're playing it back zero frames dropped at 6k red raw which is a little bit higher codec to play back than black magic raw but as you can see 
zero frames dropped up here. Very, very good. Look at the timeline performance as well, ridiculous. Let's quickly check this out. It was all on the CPU, nothing else used. Let's move on to Canon R5 8K. This is such a hard codec to play back because it's very, very like compressed and there's a lot of work to do to play this back. And we're gonna start with the full resolution. And as you can see, it's really, really chop choppy when playing it back compared to something else over there. But it's still like, kind of okay to play back and that's like full resolution i don't know who would be editing this on the full but it's it's okay look at that quite okay so now it's more likely that you're going to do this at half resolution and when we do that the performance is so much so much smoother so very very buttery smooth now so let's have a look how does it do playing back 8k raw from this canon r5 is it gonna do it not really we are playing back a slideshow of images it can't play that back and that's because as you can see we are 51 gigabytes of ram used and our cpu is absolutely maxed out and our gpu is not doing anything because there is no hardware acceleration for this codec again now if you wanted to use canon r5 8k footage then you'd probably have to play it back at quarter of a resolution and then you're not dropping any frames if you go to half a resolution it's still dropping a little bit of frames so let's press play as you can see it's do oh, it's doing some random stuff and it's not playing it back properly but as soon as you go like quarter of a resolution we're getting pretty smooth playback speed as you can see over here now red raw 8k this is uh, quite impressive over here 8k footage full resolution playback and let's have a look at the timeline performance that is pretty pretty amazing now look at these sharks they play back like as fast as i'm moving the playhead on the timeline now this like headshot is a little bit of a different is a little bit harder i think to play back but still super super smooth let's press play and then see if we're dropping any frames look at that we're playing back red 8k raw no frames dropped we're using about 49 gigabytes of ram and the cpu is doing a little bit of work here and there see 100 percent here again playing back this one but look you can totally edit 8k footage with this machine you shouldn't have any problems especially if you're doing red 8k raw editing so let's step it up a little bit this over here is a 12k footage from the black magic ursa pro 12k first of all timeline performance on 12k <laughs> this is just insane that computers can do that these days it's super super smooth in terms of timeline performance now when i press play I don't expect it to play back 12K. Yeah, we can see it's a little bit of a, you know, choppy choppy. Let's pause that. Why would you play back 12K in full resolution? Because there isn't even a 12K screen available in the world. But let's try it at half the speed. If you pre <laughs> look at that, 12K playback at half the resolution. This is insane. Let's press another play. Look, I can even play it back double the speed and we're still dropping zero frames, okay? Between the frames, we dropped 26 frames, so probably one second or something, there was a few frames lost, but that's insane. And then even playing it back, look at this, very, very smooth. To play footage back backwards, that's insane. <laughs> and now look at this, the memory usage is is right up there now we're using what 80 gigabytes or something like that if we try to play 62 gigabytes 63 using 63 gigabytes that's how you can use up all the ram so the higher the resolution is for the video as you can see we're using up quite a lot of that check out this uh, ram usage now because our rams used 96 gigabytes did you see that 96 gigabytes used when trying to do this like timeline performance 
of 12K. Look, some of the GPU is actually active for playing back this 12K Blackmagic RAW. So generally, I think this is an absolutely beast of a PC and I'm super, super happy with the video playback speeds. I know some of the codecs aren't hardware accelerated, so I'm just force editing them through like the 422 10-bits. So if you have any of those footage, there's like no computer really that can kind of force this through. But if you are using any 8K RED, it's like buttery smooth, no problem, it's not sweating at all when playing it back. And even the same with like 12K, it's, it's amazing. Now, if you're wondering about some other applications and what about some, uh, you know, photo editing or some of the slightly threaded applications over there. Now, if you want to know like how well does it perform uh, in some of those, then just relate to the single core core performance speeds either Geekbench 5 or Cinebench R23 because then you can see how good it is and just to give you a little heads up it's absolutely amazing you can throw anything at it it's good at that because the single core performance of the processor is amazing and the multi-core performance of the processor is amazing as well the graphics power for this pro uh, this PC is amazing as well so it's unbelievable so creative applications whatever you throw at it you're gonna be very very happy because it's not gonna get much better than that now if you want to see this compared to like a lower end Threadripper 24 core then hit that subscribe button because video coming out very very soon but in conclusion like I mentioned it's unbelievable PC absolutely amazing even though it feels like a very expensive PC if you put it in perspective if your workflow is 8k and you're doing like 8k editing then as you can see it's a very very cheap PC because if you're working 8k you know that all the rest of your things cost so much more than this PC to throw like a five six grand on a absolute powerhouse of a PC like this it's nothing to give you this type of 8k performance playback or 8k workflow so if you have any other questions or anything you want to add I'll meet you in the comment section below please hit that like button if you found this video helpful that massively massively not massively massively helps it actually makes a difference subscribe if you haven't already and my friends I will see you in the next video see you soon bye bye Thank you.